my YouTube friends. You don't need to spend a lot of time and energy creating complicated overlays. Not anymore. Nearly everything you could ever want to do can be done right in OBS with a simple free plugin. It takes seconds to create this face cam here, and you can make unique looking scenes for games or anything else that look like this just as easy. And I'm going to show you how to do it all today, so you know what? Let's get to it! We're going to use a simple plugin called the Advanced Mask here. There is a link in the description so you can download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. Now let's get to the install. This is the Advanced Mask page and we can go over here to the download. You can see we have Mac OS, Linux, Windows, and a Windows Zip. We're just going to use the Windows installer. Click download and it's going to go up here. And if you want to take a look around, you can go to the GitHub. It's going to have more information on what this mask does. So just in case I don't cover something here, there's lots of information on the things that you can do with this mask right here. Some pretty cool effects like this gradient mask and that sort of stuff. But now that we have it downloaded, we're just going to go ahead and go to our downloads folder. And I'm going to go ahead and unzip this we'll just extract the files and i can double click on here and double click on our advanced mask installer we're going to get an administrative prompt that you can't see so just click yes and then make sure it is leading you directly to your obs folder click next and of course it's named advanced mask and then i'm just going to go ahead and click install and of course it's telling me that obs studio is running so it's going to have to close, but of course I'm recording this in OBS. So basically you're going to click next and then it's going to install. So we'll be right back as soon as it's installed on the system. So here we go. It's now installed. We can just click finish. Let me show you how this works. All right, we're going to start out in just a basic scene. We're going to go ahead and add a camera using the video capture device. We'll just call this cam one. Click OK. I'm going to go ahead and add my microphone by going down here and use custom device and then selecting the proper microphone. And there we go. Now we have a camera and a microphone. And this is just as easy as right clicking on the asset that you want to mask and going into filters. And you click the plus and you go to advanced mask and boom, here we are. So the masks we're going to use today are the alpha masks and the type is the shape. And here we can select whatever shape we want. So we have rectangle, circle, ellipse, regular polygon, star, heart. Let's go ahead and mess with the star so that you can see all the different things we can do. Now we can do a frame check right here, which will add the full frame into it like that. And we'll go down here, the mask geometry is going to center the mask in different locations on the screen, either up or down. We're going to go ahead and reset that so it's centered. And we've got our rotation. We'll rotate the little star. So if we want it like that, we can have it. If we want it upside down, we can have that as well. So we'll go ahead and just set this somewhere around zero. That'll work. One degree, two degree, fine. We're going to go ahead and add some more points. And then we're going to move our outer radius out towards the edge of the screen. And we're going to go ahead and move our inner radius out as well. So we'll move our outer radius down here, our inner radius out so that we have a full thing. We can add more points if we want. We can add less points. It's really up to you at this point. I think that looks pretty good. Now we can add a corner radius so we can round out the corners as well of our star and we can go ahead and zoom the camera so we can zoom it in. We can zoom it out. Obviously you could see that add some weird stuff, but that is an option that we can do as well. So there we go. Now here we can feather the edges so they are nice and sharp the way it comes out of the box. We can feather the inner edge by selecting inner and then adding an amount of feather. We can feather the outer edge if we like so that we can kind of blur the edges, make it kind of just blur into the background. It's a pretty cool feature. I like it. And then we've got this scene view transformation as well, which I really think is cool because it allows you to set up everything right 
here in your scene. Instead of having to move out and replace this and do that sort of stuff, we can actually position our camera wherever we want on the screen. We can also scale it up or down so we can make it smaller and move it without ever having to go in and join our scene. So we can make it smaller, we can move it up here to the top, and bada bing, now we've really created the entire scene without ever having to go into here. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just not do that for now. I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna go and move our outer points in a little bit, shrink it up. And so then what I'm gonna do is close this down and I'm gonna click the plus right here I'm going to go into our color source and I'm just going to add a color source here. Let's go ahead and add something a little interesting. Maybe that dull yellow. That'll probably work. Click OK. It might be a little bright, but it is what it is. We're going to move that below our camera and then I'm going to right click on our color source, go into filters, click the plus. And I'm going to go to our advanced masks, click OK. And we're going to select the same shape, the star pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and add the 12 points to our star so it matches what we already have. And we're going to go and adjust our outer radius so we could see it poking out there. And we're going to adjust our inner radius so we can see it coming through there. And you can see how we have zero degrees of rotation on the color source, whereas our other one had one degree. So what I'm going to do is close this. We're going to go in here. We're going to go into filters, advanced masks, and we're going to make sure that this has zero degrees of rotation so it looks proper. And so now we have a mask with a full outline. It looks pretty cool. So what we can do with this is we'll go ahead and create another scene right here. And I'm just going to go and click the plus and I'm going to add a scene. And this is a nested scene basically. And there we go. So now we've added that as a scene. And what you'll see is now they're connected. The back drop or that color source and our camera are connected. So I can move it anywhere we want, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to go ahead and call our original scene cameras so I'll rename this and call it cam okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another scene and we're gonna show you how to add a game scene with the same kind of flair so we're gonna call this game and click OK and I'm just going to add a, another source that's gonna be our game source now I use display capture maybe you use game capture or window capture it's all going to work exactly the same so I'm gonna go ahead and capture a display and I'm just gonna call this one game cap and click OK and I'm going to select the monitor that I want to use in this case this monitor is 1360 by 768 that actually matters as you're gonna see in a second just going to drag this over here and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to our filters. We're going to click the plus and I'm going to add an advanced mask and click OK. Now I don't want all this extra space around the edge. Obviously we don't want to cut off our game. So we want our width and our height to be appropriate for a game. The first thing we're going to have to do is remember what the actual size of the screen was. So I'm just going to right click on here and go to properties and bring this up so we know that it's 1360 by 768. So I'm going to put 1360 in here and here I'm going to put 768 so we have our full screen. And the reason why we're going to do that is because it definitely does affect the next piece that we're going to do. We're going to come down here and we're going to adjust our quarter radius by using custom and I'm going to go and adjust the top left. Now if you didn't adjust your height and width properly, then your corner radiuses just are going to look all out of whack. So I'm going to try to make it a pretty light corner radius. So let's go with 150. I think that's going to look good. And then I'm going to do a bottom right corner radius of 150 as well. So there we go. Now we've got a screen with some radius corners. Looks interesting. Now you could do all four. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and then click the plus here. And I'm going to add another color source. Click OK. 
And this time we're going to use a different color. I'm going to go with kind of a muted blue. And there we go. And I'm going to put that below our screen capture. And I'm going to right click, go to filters, click the plus. We're going to add an advanced mask here. Now, as you know, this is 1920 by 1080. That's what size the screen is. So we're going to just set it properly like that and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to custom and we're going to add that radius in it 150 and 150 and there we go we can click close and then what I can do is just come down here and add this kind of as our little outline and just use the arrow keys to get it all lined up. We could probably use another color source. And you can see this is kind of weird because my monitor that I'm using is a little bit of a weird shape. So I can also use my Alt key to crop it or my Shift key to stretch it. I'm going to use the Shift key and just shorten that up a little bit. Bring it over here. And I don't really like the color. I don't think it pops very much because everything is all blue. I want to make sure that you can see it so I'm going to go into properties and I'm just going to set this color and let's just choose a red to make it really easy to see and there we go so now we've kind of got our stuff set up and when I adjusted it it kind of adjusts it weird but that's all right for the purposes of this you're probably not going to have a weird shaped monitor so when you set it up it's going to look perfect that looks good enough for me so I'm going to go over here into our scene too. We'll just drag this down. I'll click the plus. I'm going to go into our sources. I'm going to add a scene. And we're going to select the game scene. And there we go. So we could just put it in here. We'll put it behind our camera. And now we've got a cool little overlay that we can change any way we want to make it more fun and interesting for our viewers. So I could put it like this. I could move this camera over here. We can see the whole game. We could put chat up here if we want. We can do all kinds of cool things without having to create overlays outside of OBS. We've already set it up in here. We can add text sources down here with donations and all that sort of stuff. But look at this. We used advanced masks to create some cool scenes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this scene and I'm just going to duplicate it and we'll call it scene 2 to whatever. That's fine. And then we just move this up here and we move this down here. And so now we've got two different scenes with our game in it. We've got the fade transition set up so we can switch if we want it to look a little different. Maybe the camera's getting in a way of something that's down here in the bottom left on one of them. Fine. We just select a different scene. Now the camera's up here on the top right. And we can do all kinds of crazy things with this. If we wanted to take an intermission, we don't really have to change it up too much. What we could do is duplicate this again. Click OK. And on this particular duplicate, maybe we just stretch out our game scene. So it goes like this. Well, we take our camera here. And we put it in the center. And we stretch it out. So we can have a little bit of, you know, discussion. Or we could put the camera over here to the far right. We could slap the chat in here. So we still have the game in there as a backdrop. People that come in, they can see in the backdrop what game we're playing. There are so many different ways that you can do this to make it look like your own unique overlay. It's super simple. And I think sometimes super simple really works. It really pops. And all you have to do is spend a couple of minutes using this advanced mask feature to set up some absolutely incredible things. And then if you want things to flow a little bit differently, you can go and if you have the move transition installed, you can just select the move transition and now your assets are going to move around the screen because they're all the same. So we can go to this scene and you know, you see my camera shrink and this move over here. And then we can go to scene two and my camera is going to roll over to the other side of the screen. So the move transition, I didn't have to change any settings. I just have it on there. So it zooms things in, it moves them around, it looks really organic. Nobody would know that this literally took five minutes to set up. It looks awesome. It's a great tool. And by the way, like I said, it's totally free. And this is just one aspect of it. When you start to explore all the other things that it can do, well, it's going to blow your mind. It's so easy and yet it looks really good.
Are there other features in the Advanced Mask plugin that you want to see me highlight here? Let me know in the comments. And let me know what you're doing with the Advanced Mask plugin. I really want to know. If you want to learn about the plugins that I never stream without, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one.